Di Eva Cordia, August Falja Arashka, Tom Egfolum Gaelga. Um, it has been the last video I did was in February uh, of 2022, and it's now early August 2022. Uh, August is uh, me Lunasa. I'm almost positive, me Lunasa. Uh, and 2022 will be Fihe Fihe Do. Um, so just to basically, because it's been a long time, I just wanted to do a, a bit of a catch-up video on my progress with regards to Gaelga and um, how I've been kind of progressing and, and, and how things, what, what, I, what I'm kind of thinking about. Just to explain to you the reason it's been so long since my last video was because, as I mentioned in previous videos, we've had a, a new member to the family. So Garrett, and he is now 13 months old, and that had um, slowed my progress with regards to practicing daily. So I had envisaged f being finished with Duolingo in me, Bieltina, so that's May, and instead that was dragged out. So that's just it. I think the thing is that, um, you know, life kind of gets in the way of these kind of things but that's what you have to do you have to try and fit it in i think the key thing is that i didn't give up and i've carried on practicing so again just to, so or sorry to summarize what i'm going to do today is i'm going to cover off the first thing i'm going to cover off is um recent uh recent um things that i found of use so i'm just going to make a note here um so recent recent things that I found of use uh, and that you might find useful as well and um, a couple of other things as well. So the first thing I'm going to cover off Irish with Rosie, which is a YouTube channel that I have discovered. I'm going to mention some things around uh, resources on Spotify. I'm also going to cover off a thing about a song I've discovered called Cap de Hoovness um, by a band called Im Imli or Imle. I think it's Imli. Uh, I'm also going to cover off that I've completed Duolingo, uh, Oscailga, obviously. And then I'm also going to then cover off that I've restarted Rosetta Stone. So just to kind of cover off with regards to channels that I found of use, I've come across this channel Irish with Rosie, which is excellent. I have to say the content that she puts up is excellent. So she's on all the platforms, basically, um, Instagram and so on, and she puts up she puts up uh what she does is basically puts together these graphics and she's just just excellent stuff so irish with rosie and she's a an american lady who lives in alabama so it's interesting listening to her because she speaks she speaks oscailga with an alabama accent and when i first started to watch her video i actually thought she was much younger than she is she comes across as a very youthful person I really did. I was I was blown away by how good she was and the work that she was putting in because I really did think she was only in her teens. But it turns out that the lady's actually um she's about thirty years old, trucka, trucka bleen, uh, thirty years. But anyway, so um, but she's just very youthful looking kind of person. So I was amazed by that. But also, um, she she what she says she says uh in her Alabama accent she says D ye vacarja and it's just I, I just find. Um, I just find listening to her very easy going. The accent is very nice, and she's her her Irish is excellent, and she's practicing it. And in fairness, she put she puts a lot of work into what she does, and she's been doing it for some years now. Um, so again, Irish with Rosie, and so again, so the notes I have here is uh, a no tea. She has excellent content. She's great at presenting. Um, but also, and I'm, I'm amazed because she's American, but she has Irish roots, but I'm amazed that the trouble she's going to, and, and something I appreciate in her delivery is that she has very few ads. What I find is that with some of the more popular channels, it's a little bit of a criticism I'm leveling at them, is that I think I find that they're very good and excellent content, but the ads, I think there, there's too many ads and ads in the middle of uh, lessons, I think is a bit of a, a bit of a problem for me because you're somewhat in the zone and all of a sudden then some stupid ad pops up. And the way I learn is that I'm driving a lot 
So I have the video playing on YouTube coming in over the car and I'm listening. And then what happens is that you get some ad and then because you're driving, you can't really kind of skip forward and stuff like that as well. So I would encourage people who are doing content and um, for people to learn from that maybe what they do is they cut back in the ads, you know, ads at the start and ads at the end are fine. But I think these midstream ads are somewhat off putting, which means that I've given up listening to certain channels that I would have recommended in the past. But anyway, the other thing then is um, Spotify. So I seem to have I feel that I've trawled through everything I could in YouTube, um, although it has started to find some channels for me lately that it's uh, recommending. But Spotify is another good outlet for Gaelga. And uh, you basically what you do is just search for Gaelga in Spotify if you have it and it'll come up. So uh, it'll come up with them um, mainly podcasts and the podcasts are some of them are about some of them are learning and then for, for people who are learning. But the bulk of them are basically uh, people putting the podcasts as Gaelga. And um, although I probably don't understand a lot of the content, it is good to listen to what they're saying. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to listen in to try and figure out if I can understand certain words and maybe keep up with some of it and that kind of thing. So Spotify is a good resource for that kind of thing. Um, then just moving on to, there's a song I've discovered on, on uh, how did I discover it? I think it was through YouTube or something like that. Not sure, but it's called Cap to Hoovness, right? So that's like, you know, um, Cap to Hoovness, uh, Lig de Schkit. So it's basically, it's a song about staying calm um, and relaxing about things. But when, when it was probably Spotify actually that recommended it to me. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But when I listened to the, when I listened to the song, it's in Irish. And um, I didn't understand, I didn't understand the lyrics of it. But there's something about this song resonated with me. And I really enjoyed listening to it. What I'll do is I'll play a little bit of it here so you can recognize it in case you're wondering. Um, I can hear Garrett crying in the background there. Um, somebody's trying to get him to go asleep. But what I'll do is I'll play it. So I'll just play a little bit so I don't kind of get copyrighted. But uh, let me see. So. Oh. Now, I really like that song and I drive my family mad because I'm constantly playing it. And I have taken, I can't seem to get, you can get the lyrics Oscar online, but then, actually that reminds me, I wanted to discuss Google. So I've, I, I've listened to the lyrics and uh, or what I do is I read the lyrics and clearly these guys are fluent Oscar Um, You know, they'd have to be, to be singing and writing songs Oscar So, which Oscar means in Irish. Um, so they, they um, and it's a lovely song, but actually the song is about kind of relax and going with the flow of things and, you know, how life can be challenging. Um, so my plan is to what I'd like to do is actually I'm not a, I'm not a great singer. I, I can't sing. Um, but what I'd like to do is basically translate the lyrics into English, because when I can't seem to find the lyrics in English online anywhere. Um, but what I do is I drop it into Google and that's a point I was going to make about Google, uh, Google Translate is that I was listening to a podcast one day and it was, it was a lady who I think she's, um, I think she's an instructor in Ireland for, uh, or she corrects, she corrects, um, exams in Ireland, you know, for Irish. And what she's saying is that she's, oh, she's a teacher at Oscar Elga Moon Talk. And what she's saying is that she can see when people are being used in Google Translate because it doesn't quite get things right all the time. And it's interesting because when I take the lyrics for Captain Hoovness and I drop it in, it certainly gives me the gist of what the song is about. But you can see some of the translation just doesn't make sense. And my process when I'm when I'm learning Irish is to rely on Google Translate to a certain extent. But as I've become more proficient with Gaelga, I can see that Google is problematic with regards to some translation, some level of translation. And um, obviously, clearly, it's better at Irish than I am. But I think it's just interesting to see that as I have advanced slightly, to see that I'm understanding now where some things that Google Translate, I'm kind of going, that doesn't seem right. 
um, and it's not. So typically what I will do is when I'm using Duolingo, what I have on the go at the same time is I will have Duolingo open and then I might take a screen grab of what I'm trying to learn because if I get it wrong, I will do. Well, basically what I'll do is every time it asks me something, every time there's a question, I will take a screen grab of it because it's just with Duolingo, when you make mistakes in, in your type, like small typos, you can make sm small typos, you can get bogged down into trying to, some of the sentences are quite long. So what can happen is if you make a small typo, you can then correct a typo here, but you're so focused on this aspect of the sentence that you make a typo here, or you might make a typo here. And then what happens then is that you basically get bogged down into the same question over and over again. So it can be quite frustrating. But the what I, what I would normally do is I would have Duolingo on the go. Then I might take a screen grab of the question. But also what I'll have open is Google Translate. And then um, I'll have Changa.ie on the go as well. So what I'm always trying to do is I'm trying to basically either put the sentence into Google to see what it translates it for. Sometimes it's just a word. But sometimes I'll put the word into Changa.ie. And what that will do then is, you know, with Changa.ie, because it's a dictionary, it gives you the word in context. And I think that that, that, is, a, that is a good system for learning Irish, I think, having them all, all on the go at the same time. I used to think that on some level I was cheating, but it's not cheating. It's, it's just basically a good way of reinforcing um, your learning of the language. But again, the point I'm making is that Google is not perfect. Um, so don't be relying on completely for your translation. The, the, the third of the fourth point I want to make is um, I complete, complete a Duolingo Ask Ayaga. Now I'm on day 575 and I think I'd completed Gael Duolingo around day 570. So there you go. So it took me quite a long time to complete the whole thing. And I, actually, it was it was interesting because when I completed Duolingo, I was expecting some big fanfare. I thought they were going to, you know, award me with some kind of award because that's what it seems to be all about, earning badges and points and everything. But it's, it was to disappoint you. There, there was no there was no fanfare at the end. It was basically you've completed the course. And the only reason I think that they do that is because I think what they don't want to do is punctuate the fact that you finished the course for fear of you moving on. Because the whole, I think the way Duolingo works is by keeping you, um, it's a good thing in that what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep you engaged in learning, which is fine because obviously your motivation can drop. But I think what they're also trying to do is there's a certain level of, again, trying to play with your competitiveness. And that's why I think on some level for me, it feeds into, I'm not a gambling person or anything like that. But I think, as I've mentioned before, I think, they do prompt you with a view to kind of keeping you hooked because obviously that's how they make their money. Um, and now because I have completed Duolingo, I have cancelled my subscription, but um, I've paid up till March. So I'm going to use it daily as I have been up till it expires in March um, because it's just all part of the practice. But I don't believe I don't I, I, I will basically then stop using Duolingo Oscailga after that point because it has served its purpose. So just a, just a few notes on Duolingo. Uh, again, keeping in mind that when some aspects, some aspects of learning Irish through it, well, what it has done is it has shown me what certain aspects are quite challenging. So what I found really, really, really challenging was directions. I found, so normally I don't have to take, normally I don't have to take notes. Um, I rely on the whole screen grab thing and basically just full on learning. But I found myself getting bogged down into, I was really getting bogged down in learning directions, um, giving and taking directions. So for example, you know, in the West, in Irish, we have a word for in, when something is in the West, which is here, T-H-I-A-R, and going rest, which is sheer, and then going east, going east, which is sore, and then in the east, which is thor, or hor, right? And and I found I found learning those directions. I found giving and learning directions, or giving and taking directions, found it very very challenging. 
Hence, the only way I could actually get out of the module in, in the module in um, Duolingo was basically to make notes, and that's the first time I've really had to do that. So the next thing I found that was quite challenging, and these are all really towards the end of Duolingo, was the other one I found was the past tense. I found the past tense. So so for example, he used to buy Kianoi she used to steal Raide she. And then, you know, I used to buy Hyanin. I found that really, really, really challenging as well because there's a lot of there's a lot of playing around with the various endings of the verbs, which I found very, very challenging. So again, I had to take notes; otherwise, I wouldn't have. I, I don't think I'd been able to complete that aspect because it's just so easy to make typos. And that's the point I was making earlier, that once you start making these kind of typos, you can get bogged down in, and you could spend it. I could spend easily a day or two stuck on a level. And then what happens is that um, just with trying to learn in general, you know, that, that it's tiring enough. And then obviously with having a, a young child in the house. And the last thing I found quite challenging and I had to take notes on was the conditional tense. So he would put, would do, I would do, would see. So these, again, were quite challenging for me. But um, in the end, I got through them. But have I remembered them all? No. I don't think so. But I think that, you know, looking at them here, I'm thinking, no, definitely not. But the, the thing about it is that you do get through it. And with the help of the notes, on some level, it goes into your mind. But practice is what is really required. Now, so the last thing uh, I wanted to say then is I've, I've, restart, I've restarted Rosetta Stone, and um, so I've subscribed for to Rosetta Stone Oscailga. So I had originally, when I first started, say six hundred days ago, I had started with Rosetta Stone and Duolingo together, but I found it just too hard going, and um, it was just too too challenging to do the two of them back to back. But also, this the the um, the models that they use of teaching you Gaelga are very different. And I think on some level, in hindsight, they clashed. So what I would say is pick one, unless you're an absolute genius, pick one. Or if you're if you're quite proficient with Gaelga, I'd say pick one and then basically um, use one and then use the other. Obviously, it's going to drag this out. But again, I think I was very ambitious in thinking that I'd be fluent in two years. Goblin. But uh, I don't think that's realistic. I think really it is going to take five years for me to learn the language so like i said i have restarted rosetta stone and have i found any difference from when i was using rosetta stone from now to the past so basically has has duolingo helped me with rosetta stone and i would say kinche kinche definitely definitely absolutely definitely in that my learning i'm much more proficient in my uh, pronunciation because with, with with Rosetta Stone the difference with Rosetta Stone and Duolingo is Rosetta Stone makes you sp speak Irish you have to you have to speak into the mic to say certain things and then it, it marks you on them and you can't move forward until you're pronounce pronouncing the words correctly so what I would say is that it that is excellent but I'm definitely more proficient in that regard but also the the the, the what I have learned with Duolingo is not gone to waste. So I think it is a good step up. So I never quite finished Rosetta Stone the last time because basically, again, I realized probably halfway through that it was just too challenging because at the time as well, I was doing online courses. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to focus in on Rosetta Stone. And I think then once I've completed Rosetta Stone, which I'm presuming is going to take me six months. Uh, I, it's assuming it's going to be six months or so before I have it finished. What I'm going to do then is um, I'm going to start working on things like translating. That's that's what I think I want to do. So I'm going to really try and hone in on what I've learned with Rosetta Stone and Duolingo. And then I'm going to basically start working on translating words to build up my vocabulary. Because I feel that... Um, Duolingo and Rosetta Stone have helped me with um, with the basics of the language in that I do feel now that 
although my spelling may be off and I do get certain sentences wrong because some sentences seem to break the rules of how you're supposed to speak Irish and, and that is quite challenging. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to try and work on my vocabulary, which might mean then say something like the song kept to hoovness. I'm going to sit down and spend my time because I won't be using Duolingo and I won't be using Rosetta Stone. I'm going to spend my time translating these things in and then trying to build my vocabulary through that. Um, and then at that stage, then I might be confident enough to maybe start going back to doing online classes because I think that would be that would make sense because I think I jumped in too soon to online classes discussing people. OK, so that's that. Now, just how do I feel at the moment? How do I feel with regards to learning Irish? Um, I'm still very positive. I'm still very happy that I'm doing it. I still thoroughly enjoy it. And that's saying something because obviously we're coming up on 600 days. And um, the, the only thing I've really made any kind of commitment to something like this before was when I used to be into running marathons. And they would be equally demanding, obviously in a completely different way, but very, very demanding time-wise. Um, so I still am enjoying doing this and I don't see any end to the course. But again, the frustration I have with learning Irish ironically in Ireland is really and this is an ongoing issue for me it seems to be the sort of on the one hand the abundance of resources but also the lack of resources and I think for me personally speaking it just doesn't seem to be enough to make Irish accessible to people it's just so so for example Irish with Rosie so she typifies to me the issue with learning Irish there you have uh, a young woman based out of Alabama producing this information and it's excellent stuff and I'm learning from it but there doesn't seem to be an equivalent sort of setup for me in the village I live in um, for me I have to either go online to learn everything and that's piecemeal or else what I have to do is head into Dublin city centre which again is just not practical time wise so I just feel a level of frustration that it is so challenging to learn Irish in Ireland and there's a huge amount of people out there who speak Irish that you know so who put up podcasts and, and do stuff on YouTube but the problem is it seems to be either overly basic or too too proficient too they're, they're basically fluent on the other end there doesn't seem to be there doesn't seem to be a piece in the middle. So, you know, you have a lot of, again, you have a lot of people who teach Irish or are trying to learn Irish who are basically, as I've said before, say American, English, whatever. And um, they're doing their best. But probably what I'm learning now is I need some level of immersion into the language. But that's just not practical for me because that would mean going to a Gael talked somewhere or going to classes or pop up Gael talks. But it's just not practical. So that just doesn't seem to be an easy way for me to learn the language that, um, that works for me, which is, again, quite frustrating and somewhat ironic. I feel that in Ireland, there is a sort of, there is a culture of Gaelga out there, but on some level, it seems to be somewhat just beyond my grasp, which is very frustrating. So that's the end of my gripe um, around that. Other than that, I am working away on it. And the view would be, I suppose, well, am I coming up to two years now? It'll be two years at the end of this year and I have three years to go. So hopefully with the likes of, you know, working with dictionaries and, you know, these kind of this is my son's dictionary from school. So what I do here is I just kind of basically flick through it, looking at various words to try to familiarize myself. But I mean, you know, where are we? this is going to be halfway through. There you go. So. You can see the font is tiny on this. So really what I need to do is work on my vocabulary. And then I think the other thing then I think is practicing speaking the language to bring it alive in my mind. But um, yeah, there you go. So Shine, Shine, August, um, Gura Mahagat for um, watching this video. 
and hopefully my next update won't be so long but it could be could be um and as with as with these things always i appreciate any comments that you have and any support and any suggestions because you did suggest some very good um resources that i have found useful so the thing i'd say is use spotify use youtube um you know books listen to the radio listen to podcasts whatever you can and try and immerse yourself in it duolingo is excellent rosetta stone is very good and i think just slowly but surely build up but what really what you need to get is i think you need to get an ear for the language and you need to understand the tempo and the structure of it and then like anything you can build on top of that so as i said shine that's the end of it slan august uh, bannocked my hair